Oh! At a sharp turn, the wheels of the chariots hit each other. They fly up and land. Uh Uh-oh! The chariot driver nearly fell to the sand covering the floor of the arena. He held on just in time and continued the race. 11 laps of the crazy race are left behind. Wheels smashed, carts flipped over, and horses stumbled. The final lap is ahead. 12 chariots started the race, only two remain. The show must go on. The athletes are exhausted, but they fly towards victory and masterfully control six wild horses. They reach the home stretch. One of the chariot drivers rushes forward and crosses the finish line first. The Emperor of Rome is pleased. The 200,000 spectators give the winner a thunderous round of applause. Thousands of people are repeating the name. Diocles, Diocles, Diocles. Well, that was fun. The writer's full name is Gaius Apuleius Diocles. He's won 1,500 races in his career. He's a real star. The only chariot driver with more fans is the emperor himself. Diocles is difficult to overtake, not only on the race course, but also in the financial sense. He's the richest athlete in history. If Diocles lived in our time, his accounts would be full to bursting at an incredible $15 billion. Michael Jordan is the richest athlete of our time and doesn't even come close. The basketball player has $2.1 billion, less than a seventh of Diocles' fortune. But hey, $2.1 billion ain't bad. Diocles was so rich that he owned two and a half tons of gold. What else is there to do with your money if you're the wealthiest athlete on the planet? Well, with his yearly income, Diocles could feed the entire population of the empire's capital city for a year. And at that time, at least 450,000 people lived in the city. Even if we combined the wealth of today's 50 richest athletes, they wouldn't overtake Diocles. He's the absolute champion, and it's unlikely that any athlete will ever surpass his fortune. Currently, inventor and entrepreneur Elon Musk is the richest person on the planet. His net worth is estimated to be around $203 billion. But Elon Musk isn't anywhere near the wealthiest person in history. The richest person of all time is the Chinese emperor Shenzong of Song. Counting his wealth is almost impossible. Modern economists believe that the Shenzong of Song controlled 30% of the world's wealth. The emperor's capital is estimated at $30 trillion. The rulers of ancient China knew how to spend money. They spent $95 billion building the Great Wall. With that money, you could build 2,317 empire state buildings. The Roman Empire controlled the entire Mediterranean, and Augustus Caesar was its wealthiest ruler. He owned one-fifth of all the property of the empire. Modern economists value his net worth at more than $4.6 trillion. Now, there are expensive yachts. There are super expensive yachts. And then there's the history supreme. The boat is only 100 feet long, but adorned with 10 tons of gold and platinum. The ship is worth a ridiculous $4.8 billion. Hope it doesn't sink. The cabins are decorated with a gold aquarium, diamonds, meteorite shards, and even the bones of a Tyrannosaurus rex. By comparison, the most expensive private jet, the Airbus A380, costs $500 million. If King Mansa Musa I lived in our time, then his money would be enough to buy 80 history supremes. If he buys himself a gold fleet, then $16 billion remain in his wallet. The king's wealth was estimated at $400 billion. Mansa Musa I ruled the African country of Mali during the Middle Ages. And he got rich from the extraction of gold and salt, which was very valuable in the past. When you're worried about running over your budget in a restaurant, think of King Mansa. When he decided to go on vacation, he was accompanied by 80,000 people. He took 13 tons of gold for travel expenses. Apparently, he was also a big tipper. He spent so much when he was on these travels that he devalued gold. This led to the collapse of the entire Mediterranean economy. The richest woman of our time is Francois Betancourt Myers. She's worth $72 billion, but there's a woman in history who earned even more. If the Queen of Egypt, Cleopatra, came to our time, 
she would be worth a staggering $100 billion. This would make her the fifth richest person on the planet. She would even overtake Mark Zuckerberg and Warren Buffett. Cleopatra received a percentage of the sale of all goods sold inside Egypt and controlled the production of wheat, papyrus, and glass. Because of this, some scholars believe that Cleopatra's net worth might have actually been far higher. The most generous estimates have her valued at four times what we initially thought, at $400 billion. That would make the former queen of Egypt over twice as rich as Elon Musk. Pharaoh Khufu of Egypt funded one of the most expensive constructions of all time, the pyramids. The ancient Egyptians didn't have access to the powerful trucks, excavators, and cranes that we have today, so the build was even more expensive. The Great Pyramid of Giza was the biggest of the pyramids and was the tallest structure on the planet for 4,000 years. It is 150 feet taller than the Statue of Liberty and is made of around 2.3 billion blocks, each weighing as much as an average car. If you want to repeat the Egyptians' feet, then prepare to pony up about $2.5 billion, which was no problem for Pharaoh Khufu. The gold mines in the Nubian desert were the ruler of Egypt's primary source of income. They made him so much money that he was the richest person of his era. The richest king of our times lives in Thailand. He has $34 billion at his disposal. King William I of England was seven times richer. According to the calculations of modern economists, there was $230 billion in his treasury. Twelve monarchies survived in Europe. The Luxembourg Dukes are the richest remaining royal family. This may be surprising, given that Luxembourg is so small. The entire country is the same size as Orange County, California. The Grand Duke's wealth is estimated to be around $4 billion. That's enough to build a pyramid, but he doesn't have enough money for the most expensive yacht. It's easy to become wealthy if you're a king or a pharaoh, but ordinary people can rise to the top of the wealth charts too. Jacob Fugger was born in Germany in the 16th century to a family of weavers. Since childhood, Jacob studied accounting. When Mr. Fugger grew up, he became a banker. A few years later, he became the wealthiest human of his time. He was just very good at counting money. Even European kings borrowed money from Fugger. According to the documents of that time, it's known that his fortune was estimated at 2 million guilders. Today, it's $400 billion. John Davison Rockefeller created Standard Oil, which controlled 90% of the U.S. oil market. Thanks to this, the entrepreneur became the first dollar billionaire in the history of the country. By 1918, Rockefeller's capital was estimated at $1.5 billion. Today, this amount is equivalent to $400 billion. Not bad for the son of a lumberjack. Rockefeller's main rival in terms of wealth is Andrew Carnegie. He was involved in the production and sale of steel and earned $370 billion. He spent a considerable portion of that fortune on charity. 100 years ago, there was no internet, and books were the main source of information. With his own money, Carnegie built 2,500 public libraries in the U.S. and around the world. What's that they say? Leaders are readers? Seems so. The Taj Mahal is one of the most popular tourist sites in India. The complex was built in the 17th century by order of the emperor Shah Jahan. Today, such construction would cost $960 million. Shah Jahan is considered the richest Indian in history. But that's not accurate. Osman Ali Khan ruled one of the Indian principalities from 1911 to 1948. In 1937, he was named the richest person on the planet. By modern standards, he had $236 billion. Ali Khan built roads, open universities, and loved science. He also loved Rolls Royce and gems. There were 50 cars in his garage, and his collection of diamonds and rubies were worth $400 million. Today, New York and Hong Kong are home to the most billionaires. There are 92 in the Big Apple and 71 in Hong Kong. But this wasn't always the case. Nowadays, Venice is a popular tourist destination in Italy, but during the Renaissance, this city was the world's financial capital. 
It controlled trade throughout the Mediterranean, and many of the wealthiest people in the world live there. Hey! How many times have you thought, what would I buy if I had billions? Well, when you have so much money you don't know what to do with, here's what these billionaires did. Elon Musk's submarine car Buying a fancy set of wheels for a billionaire is nothing new. But when it's an iconic James Bond car, you're really spending money. The submarine car was just what Elon Musk needed to add to his collection for a cool 1 million. But if you're thinking, not a bad price for a car that can go underwater, guess what? It doesn't! The customized Lotus Esprit was nothing more than a movie prop. A Manhattan parking space. If you thought parking was bad in Manhattan before, now you can buy a space for one million dollars. Pocket chain for a billionaire, right? That's the price at 72 Crosby Street for exclusive rights to one of 10 spots under its unit. When you break it down, the parking space are a whopping $5,000 per square foot. In comparison, the high-class condos above go for $3,140 a square foot. Yep, your parking space is actually more expensive than your apartment. I think I'll just walk or take the subway from now on. Clive Palmer's Titanic Instead of buying a luxury yacht or even hiring one when needed, Australian billionaire Clive Palmer decided to buy his own. And I gotta say, I love the theme he went with. Titanic 2 will be a near exact replica of the most famous ship in history, even down to the Grand Staircase. Only Palmer decided to build his Titanic a bit bigger because why not <laughs> when money isn't a problem? Some things have been updated to accommodate modern features and a smoother ride. After several delays in the project, Titanic 2 is planned to hit the water in 2022. The project's grand total? Half a billion dollars. A 350-year-old royal diamond. Imagine getting your hands on a jewel once worn by a 17th century princess. The beautiful little batch of diamond was originally over 35 carats. That was until the new owner in 2010, Lawrence Graff, decided to cut it. The diamond lost more than 4 carats in the process. Yes, shave off pieces of a big gem passed down through centuries. To be fair, the recutting was to get rid of flaws and enhance the color. And it ended up selling to present-day royalty for $80 million. A skyscraper house. Welcome to the private home of Indian billionaire Mukesh Ambani and his family. Second only to Buckingham Palace in value, this Mumbai property cost up to $2 billion to build. So, how could you possibly spend that much on a house? Well, it's 27 stories tall and features three helipads with an air traffic control room, space for 168 cars, a ballroom, terrace garden, ADC theater, spa, and even a snow room for when you're craving a little winter no matter what the season. It's hardly a home you could get bored in. A gold private jet. How awesome would it be to have a flying palace? I'm not talking science fiction here either. The Sultan of Brunei, known for his extravagant spending, wanted a private jet that just oozed luxury living. His personal Boeing 747 is made entirely from gold. The plane itself costs around 100 million. Tack onto that an additional 120 million to customize the jet into something only a Sultan could fly in. Hey, if you've got the money, why not? A diamond studded luxury car. Now this car would be hard to insure, but when you're a billionaire, I doubt that's much of a problem anymore. Stories started buzzing around about Saudi Prince Al Walid spending close to 48 million for a Mercedes-Benz covered in 300,000 Swarovski crystals. They even say it costs 1,000 just to touch the bedazzled car. Turns out, the whole thing never happened. The car does exist and was on display at different auto shows. 
but the prince never bought it. An actual island. The royal family in the UAE has bought many things with their money. But when you own a private island in Abu Dhabi, it seems you've got to put your mark on it. Sheikh Hamad was so keen on showing the world what he owned, he had his name engraved into the sand. Not small either, like the Walk of Fame. I'm talking massive letters, even visible from space. Before you hop on Google Earth to check it out, unfortunately, it's already been filled in. Still, while a lot of billionaires do have their own private islands, none have gone quite this far to really claim it as their own. Fancy furniture. Do you have a spare 36 million to spend on furniture for your home? Me neither. But Prince Hans Adams II of Liechtenstein decided to do just that. The piece in question was an ebony badminton cabinet. Why was this item of furniture so expensive? Apart from being an 18th century historic piece, it's engraved with lots of very valuable precious stones, such as agate, amethyst quartz, and many more. It even broke its own record as the most expensive piece of furniture ever sold. Gold toilet paper. I wish I was lying to you on this one, but no. An Australian company called Toilet Paper Man decided that people need gold luxury no matter where you are or what you're doing. A single three-ply roll made of 22 karat gold would cost the buyer nearly 1.4 million. This has become one of the strangest things to buy for the super rich. And something tells me that's a little too odd even for them. A golden toilet. Now that you have your golden TP handy, surely an ordinary bathroom won't cut it anymore. One Hong Kong jeweler decided to create an entire bathroom out of gold and precious jewels. Everything from the toilet bowl, sink, toilet brushes, holders, mirror frames, chandeliers, to even the doors and tiles is 24 karat gold. The ceiling is even decorated in rubies, sapphires, emerald, and amber. The total cost? 3.5 million dollars. Louis Vuitton trash cans. You know you're rich when even your trash gets to be designer. In 2018, cosmetics tycoon Kim Kardashian showed off the newest accessory for her home. Both the waste and recycling bins are decked out in Louis Vuitton logos. Probably just a custom pay job, but can say for sure. If you want one of your own, a mini Louis Vuitton bin can be bought on eBay for 5,000. Or spend that on something more useful to treat yourself. Maybe like our next item. A Louis Vuitton handbag. That looks like a trash bag. Hey, on the plus side, it's waterproof and comes in green and brown. The bags are called raindrop bases and cost nearly 2,000. Hmm. I can probably make one of those for less than five bucks. A 10,000 year clock. Being the richest person in the world on and off again, what do you do with all that money? Jeff Bezos figured it out. Build a big rocket and take a day trip to space. Okay, yes, he did that, but he's also currently working on another expensive project. He's making a clock. But not just any regular kind, it's the clock of the long now. Ooh, mysterious. Bezos is putting it deep inside a mountain on his property in Texas. Once finished, it'll be as tall as a 50-story skyscraper. It's cost over 40 million so far. The 10,000-year clock ticks only once a year and will chime once every thousand years. Good think it's mechanical. Imagine trying to make batteries big enough. One expensive haircut. When the Sultan of Brunei needs a haircut, he's ready to pay upwards of 25,000 for one. Having his barber fly out from central London every few weeks on a private jet, hopefully the Flying Palace one, <laughs> and everything is paid for the hairdresser. The hotel, luxury food, transportation, you name it, nothing is off. Hey, there are more useless things to spend your millions on. Like the next item on our list. A stale piece of cake. A 
piece from the 1937 wedding cake of the Duke and Duchess of Windsor was sold at a Sotheby's auction for nearly 30,000 back in 1998. And I've got just the treat to go with that cake. The world's most expensive ice cream. For just 817 a scoop, you can enjoy the black diamond ice cream at Scoopy Cafe in Dubai. Your wallet-busting dessert contains edible 23 karat gold flakes along with plenty of fancy important ingredients like truffle and saffron. The treat comes served in a Versace bowl and spoon. And good news! If you're ready to show over that kind of money for some ice cream, you get to keep the designer dish and utensil. Till next time, stay bright! You know, with social media platforms, people compare themselves to others more than ever. How do you feel when you see someone post travel photos, exotic beaches, or expensive rooftop dinners on Instagram? It suddenly seems everyone is rich, except you. Well, cheer up! Rich people don't compare themselves with what they see on the internet. They focus on what they do instead of watching others. No need to feel bad about not being in those fancy places when you can make yourself proud by getting up off the couch and actually doing something. To-do lists may sound like a cliché, but apparently they work. Or at least that's something 81% of rich people will tell you. Most of them make a to-do list before bed, so they can go to sleep without thinking about all those things they need to do the next day. Richard Branson, the founder of Virgin Group, goes with these types of lists every day. Not only does he put down on paper things he needs to do, but also mm. writes down ideas that randomly come upon his mind. It's good to have a separate piece of paper where you can write down all of those small things you often delay for later and, of course, eventually forget. You know, like call someone to fix your printer that's been broken for months, make a list of cleaning supplies your place desperately needs, pick up clothes from the laundry service, or wait, how long has this remote control been out of batteries? Write all your goals down, too. 95% of successful people do that. When you tick off at least some of them, you won't struggle with feeling nothing's ever changing in your life. Don't put them all on the same list at the same time. When you see so many bigger things you want to achieve in one place, it can easily become overwhelming, and you might start thinking you will never have enough time to get them. And that mostly means bye-bye motivation. I won't do a single thing from that list. Elon Musk has an idea to avoid that part. He uses 5-minute blocks to plan his work schedule. Not only do they help him track his tasks, but it also seems easier to deal with your goals one by one. Cheers to that idea, Mr. Musk! Oh, can I catch a ride on one of your spaceships? Hey, doesn't hurt to ask! These days, everyone can afford designer bags, expensive clothes, and the latest iPhone. It's just that people who do that to impress others will have it on credit. Rich ones don't show off luxury brands. Ingvar Kamprad, the founder of IKEA and one of the richest people in the world, used to buy all of his clothes at flea markets. He always took the economy flights, went to budget hotels, and even cut his hair in developing countries to save money on trivial things like these. Rather than investing in material stuff, rich people spend their money on meaningful experiences. When Ed Sheeran took a break from his tour, he went traveling for a couple of months. Not only was it a great way to rest from concerts, but it also helped him in getting inspiration for new music. There are free ways to deal with work stress and collect some cool memories, as Haley Diber does. Haley says smiling back to random people and starting a conversation out of nowhere helps her keep a positive attitude about life and get away from stressful thoughts. Chatting with a lady in a supermarket, a person in an elevator, or an Uber driver definitely is one of the fun things to help her see things from a different angle. Wealthy people mostly create something that will bring them passive income. That means they're not paid hourly, and they don't only earn their paycheck while working. The money can keep rolling while they're chilling in front of the TV, spending time with family and friends, playing with their dog, or even when they sleep. Actually, rich people don't spend that much time at all chilling in front of the TV. Passive income, also known as royalties or residuals and such, is when you write a How to Get Rich ebook and get some money every month from Amazon sales. It's also when you sell a hit song like your, let's say, Ariana Grande. 
rent your house, apartment, or even a car to someone, start monetizing your travel blog, and all those things where you continue to earn money after you finish the work. Well, you have to develop a good idea and put some effort into your project initially. But later on, your money keeps coming in as a result of previous work. 658, 7 o'clock, 707. This is how my alarms go in the morning, and don't even get me started on snoozes. Rich people don't do that. Many of them get up three hours before work so they can do some productive things when no one else is up, like exercise, meditate, enjoy some lemon water and coffee, write down their goals. It's easier to stay disciplined when you're fresh in the morning than to try to fix your day later on, and when you don't snooze your alarm, of course. The rich also make their bed. Charles Duhigg is the author of the best-selling book, The Power of Habit, and he says when you make your bed in the morning, it helps to set your mind to a productive mode. If you can do that, you can do another small task, and another, and little by little, your day is full of smaller and bigger things you manage to complete. Most people just want to relax when they come home from work, so they go for the easiest options – cell phone or TV. Even though our brain sometimes needs those meaningless actions, let's face it, they bring nothing good to our lives. Millionaires already know it, so more than 60% of them watch TV one hour or less per day. 78% of poor people watch reality shows, while only 6% of the rich do that. Rich people read instead, and mostly not just for fun. They also listen to audiobooks while taking a walk or on their way to work. Don't turn on some random radio station and listen to endless morning news. Go with something educational or inspirational. Podcasts, books, TED Talks, hmm, bright side? Hey, you can learn a lot here! A good education doesn't end with high school or a college degree, despite what many graduates think. Rich people tend to always learn something new and educate themselves in self-improvement and work stuff. There are many online courses, books, and websites where you can find something new. Learning is a lifelong thing. The rich also have their way to stay focused on work. Warren Buffett reads books 80% of his day. He claims that helps him think clearly. Many of his great financial decisions were inspired by books he'd read. Jonathan Franzen is a New York best-selling author, and he likes to eliminate all external distractions when starting his work. He goes to a soundproof studio, turns off the lights, closes the blinds on the windows. No TV, junk food, cell phones, or any other things people like to go for when they don't feel like working. He even puts on the blinders, even though it's almost impossible to write like that. Wealthy people have enough money to eat the best delicacies from all over the world but they still choose a simple menu. Richard Branson says he likes eating fruit salad and muesli for breakfast. Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey eats only one meal per day. He also takes ice baths and does 7-minute body exercises instead of hitting the gym. Yes, you need your body to be healthy and in good shape to go through the day, so adding physical activities to your things-to-do to be a millionaire list is almost a must. What poor people often don't know is when to stop working. Millionaires know there's no use in any skills if the body is exhausted or overstressed. Most rich people don't just eat their lunch as fast as they can in front of their computer. They take their time, enjoy a break, and free their mind for new challenges that are about to come. Also, a big no to taking the work home. Wealthy people never give up. Steve Jobs was persistent even at the most difficult times. When Apple set the launch date for the first iPhone, everyone was talking about how Jobs had given his employees an almost impossible task. In 2005, they had to get the iPhone and its gadgets to work, which wasn't easy at all. He never gave up on his ideas, which eventually led him and his company to the huge part they played in the digital revolution. Rich people prefer not to talk about money in public, and they never complain about it, neither in public nor in private. Those who do aren't usually great with it. Such people are ready to waste the last 500 bucks on a pair of new shoes and be left with a $10 bill in their wallet. New money tends to scream, show off, and be as posh and luxurious as possible, while old money is way more modest and poised. 
It's the reason why you may be sitting right next to an extremely wealthy person who owns a multi-billion dollar company and have no idea about it. Wealthy people often care about non-material things more than about something you can buy. They value privacy and comfort. That's why you'll probably never guess how rich a certain person actually is. Sure, there are those who made their fortune thanks to their fame and, as a result, zero privacy. But they make only about 3% of the rich. Rich people focus on what's inside, not outside, and they care a lot about health. Perfect teeth, smooth, spotless skin, and great posture. Grills adorned with precious gems can't interest them. Instead, their main goal is to have sparkling white and presentable teeth. They also care a lot about nails, so chances are you aren't ever going to see a really wealthy lady with long, ungroomed extensions. They prefer their nails neutral, perfectly trimmed, and having zero burrs. Another thing no rich person would ever do is spend time to save money. Wealthy people understand time is the most valuable resource out there, so they never prefer a couple of saved pennies to it. Poor people never pay for something they can do themselves. They always think twice if they can handle it without somebody else's help, be it a car repair, nails, or even a haircut. Truly rich people never bother even thinking about it. Remember, they always prefer their precious time over money. As for clothes, you aren't likely to see many labels on mature rich people. Luxury brands are now focusing on the younger generation, whose priority is to show off sometimes. Even if they had to save up lunch money for a half a year before they could afford to buy that brand new designer bag. Buying something you can't afford is not the best option, especially when it comes to something really expensive. Loans and credit cards eat up your budget with unfair interest rates. You may think having your own housing is cheaper because you don't need to pay the rent, but in fact, it's vice versa. So many rich people prefer to rent, not buy. Shoes are probably the most expensive thing in their outfit. Rich people believe investing in good accessories is important for comfort, plus the accessories do bring any look to a brand new level. Anyway, their outfits always match the occasion. They never overdress or put on all the best clothes they've got to show off. If it's a workout, they put on something that best fits it. If it's a formal occasion, they never hesitate to put on exquisite jewelry to complete their outfit. But they never do vice versa just because some piece of clothing is pricey and might show their status somehow. When wealthy people are out dining, they rarely look at the prices. Even more, they rarely look at the menu either. Usually, they ask the waiter about specialties or simply order what they want. This rule can be applied to almost any purchase. It's pretty easy to understand whether you can afford something or not. If you stop to think whether you can, chances are you can't. Once you've started looking at cars and buildings as if they were cheap as a new t-shirt, it means you've become rich. Some credit cards can be made of metal, and if you ever see one, it surely belongs to a rich person. Different colors are also a good way to show what sort of bank client you are. Metal car fees start at $500 and can reach up to $5,000 per year. Colors matter too, but it's pretty obvious. Those who want to be, and not only seem rich, might want to reconsider their money habits. If you clip a coupon just to get some random discount, better not. You risk ending up spending way more than you planned. In 2018, over 256 billion coupons were distributed in the US. A $200 item seems less appealing to us than one that used to cost $400 but was 50% discounted. You may feel excited clipping the coupon and using it, thinking about the bargain you've just had. But don't fall for it. Coupons make us spend more, forcing us to buy things we don't actually need. Before going grocery shopping, write a list of purchases, not to be lured by coupons. Same with discounted items. These can be real bargains sometimes, but if you buy something just because it's a bit less pricey, think twice. Poor quality and misleading delicious food don't give you enough nutrients, making you long for more and more. You can make your dishes more savory, adding some herbs. Try yourself at gardening, growing herbs in pots on your windowsill. 
It's also a bad idea to go grocery shopping when hungry, and especially if you do it more than once a week. Hunger makes you want to buy more and more. And sometimes, you can have a temptation to buy things you don't normally eat. But you don't care now, since you're starving. Some tips for saving money can be great. But there's one thing you should never, ever do. Lotteries aren't going to make you rich. The only thing they're sure to do is burn your money to ashes fast. And millionaires don't pop into convenience stores just to casually grab a few lottery tickets. Odds are you're going to lose those $2 you invested. Yup, doesn't seem that much, but a regular lottery habit can turn into a major expense. Just count. If you buy two tickets at a time once a week, you'll spend about $200 a year. Money you could spend on education, sport, hobbies, or other long-term projects. All the other get-rich-quick schemes don't work either. The only people who actually got rich with those are their creators. Coffee is not the healthiest habit, so many millionaires don't spend money on it, opting for good quality water or other beverages. Still, if you just can't say no to your guilty pleasure, try buying a thermo cup and brew coffee at home. You'll save money and nature, since the disposable coffee cups aren't recyclable and it takes about 20 years for them to decompose. A pop-in in a coffee shop may be your daily ritual. But have you ever counted how much you spend on your morning habit? Millennials spend over $2,000 a year on coffee, investing sometimes more than they do in their retirement. Rich people are conscious, and they care not only about themselves, but about the environment, too. Here's why you can often see rich people with their own water bottles. We usually need about 50 ounces of water a day, and bottled water may turn out pricey if you calculate all the bottles bought over a recent year. In total, people buy about 200 billion bottles a year. A nice reusable bottle with a filter will keep you hydrated and rich. As for daily habits, rich people care a lot about what they eat, so their meals never include snacks full of simple carbs. We spend a lot of money on small and quick things without even noticing it. For instance, quick snacks at gas stations may not cost a lot, but if you grab it every now and then, it will add up to a pretty penny in the end. If you can't afford restaurant lunches yet, try packing your own lunch instead. Of course, you can eat out every day or shell out for some ready-to-consume only heat-up lunches. Anyway, a Tupperware with home-cooked meals is healthier and cheaper. These tricks can help you save hundreds of dollars a month.